Hey, it's Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This is Dr. Durr. I'd like to welcome you back to the Wake Up Yasharal channel. All praise to the Most High Yahuwah, from whom all blessings and benefits flow. His son, Yahushua, Yahuwah, is salvation. The Ruach Hakkad, that's the set up our spirit, the comforter, the one who leads us in all truth. I pray that all is well with you and your family. And we want to thank you for coming back today to fellowship with us. Today's lesson is entitled, Yahuwah's Covenant People. Who are these people? Yahuwah's covenant people, ones that he made a covenant with years ago. Some of you, when you hear that, you're probably saying, well, we already know that, and that's a good thing. Well, I'm going to tell you why y'all has me teaching this today. It's because for years, I didn't know I was his people because in Christianity, we were told that we were his people based on our connection to the imposters over there in our place in Israel when everything is really in reverse they told us that we were Gentiles they told us that we were Africans they told us that we were the people that were up under a curse because remember Ham's son Canaan was cursed because he looked upon the nakedness of his father Noah so they had us believing that and really the curse that we up under has nothing to do with that. The curse we up under has something to do with Deuteronomy the 28th chapter verses 15 through 68 because of our waywardness, our sinful ways and our lawlessness, we begin to disobey Yah and start to follow the Elohims of other nations. That's why we in punishment. And we were told that we were his people because we connected to them. To the imposters over in Yashorel, Israel. Not knowing that in all actuality, when you look at history, the historical data, when you really start going into the set of our scriptures, studying, line up on line, precept up on precept, the truth came out that we are actually his people. We are his chosen people. And today, Yah wants me not to go into deep detail but to teach some scriptures and to read some scriptures into your hearing that will keep you comforted, that will keep you encouraged, that will keep you motivated to keep moving forth in him and realize ain't nothing nobody in the world can do to you and I because we are Yahuwah's chosen people. You can't be joined into a nation of people. You have to be born into a nation of people as a Hebrew Israelite. We are Hebrew Israelites by birth. That's why y'all told us not to marry the other heathens to get with them because it was going to mess up our bloodline. But over here in the land of our captivities and living in wickedness and living in debauchery, we have found ourselves all over the place mixed up and mingled with every nation and race. But the set apart scriptures say that Yahuwah knows his people and let those that name the name of Yahuwah depart from iniquity. Listen, saints, Yah has put his name in our hand. The word Yah is in our hand, the palm of our hand. You can see it laid out. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Saints, I thank the Most High for the awakening. My awakening happened and occurred through different stages from 85 all the way up until 2009 when I actually started walking into it. And when it happened, Yah began to reveal to me that I was Israel. I took a DNA test got back the right results, and all of a sudden the company was bought by an the imposters themselves, a company, and they began to remove all of the data that revealed who we were. And so things changed with that company. Then y'all made sure that I got a Bible compact dictionary book. He made sure it got into my hand. Look, let me tell you something right now. When y'all want you to get information, it's going to come to you. And when I read this book, this book took me to another level in my walk with him. And I said, these people say, when you put stuff in the book, you can hide it from black people because they don't like to read. And that's pretty much true. But thank the most high for me loving to read and wanting to research and wanting to find out who I was. So I began to look at different books. And the Zondervan Bible Company is one of the biggest Bible distributors in the world. And they have a Bible compact dictionary that I purchased. As I stated, Zondervan is one of the biggest Bible distribution companies. I mean, Christians bragged about the Zondervan book. But when I found this compact dictionary, I went to the definition of Ham. Look what it says. It says, Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons to live through the flood, he became the progenitor or the father 
of the dark races. I say, wow, he came the father of the dark races. Yeah, Ham. Ham means dark. It's a dark continent. The Africans, not the Negroes. Now, when I heard right after that, not the Negroes, I say, well, who are the Negroes? And, it start, and I start realizing, hold up. This stuff is, they've been knowing who we were all these years. It's just been hidden from us. And we walking around talking about we Gentiles, talking about we Africans, and you're not even an African. He said, but these are the people that's connected to him. The Egyptians, black people, Ethiopians, black, Libyans, black, and the Canaanites. So here we are thinking that we're African when we are Hebrew Israelites. Now listen to the rest of this definition. His indecency when his father lay drunken brought a curse up on Canaan. So that's where the curse came up on Canaan. We are not Canaanites. We are Hebrew Israelites, not Canaanites. We are Hebrew Israelites and not Ethiopians. We're not Libyans and we're not Egyptians. So let's set that record straight. That's who we are. We are his people. And I'm going to read some set apart scriptures to you. And you're going to understand that this awakening had to take place. It's been going on for years. Many people have been awakened way before many of us. They've been awakened for years trying to tell us and we couldn't hear. But now that we have awakened, guess what? The awakening has skyrocketed and has gone to another level. People are waking up all over the world. Millions and millions of folks have now waking up and they are finding out their identity. And some of them, I'm telling you now, you're not going to move them anymore because they know who they are. I know who I am. My brothers and sisters are knowing who they are. And we have made up our minds that we're going to seek y'all while he may be found and call upon him while he is yet near. As a matter of fact, you can't stop the awakening anyway because it's Yahuwah is doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Listen at this. Yah told us that he was going to wake us up in the land of our captivities and we were going to know who we were and begin to keep the Torah, his Tanakh, his Besora, and his Brit Hadashah and start keeping the set-apart scriptures and start keeping the Shabbats and his feast days again because we have waken up to who we are as Yahuwah's people. We are his people. Now let's get into some set-apart scriptures. Here's a powerful passage of scripture, Shemut, Exodus 19 and 5. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, that's what y'all wants us to do, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Now notice what y'all say. Y'all say we would have obeyed his voice, kept his covenants, he said, we'd have been a peculiar treasure unto him, watch this, above all people. And that's what we failed to do and ended up in this 400 years of captivity, which he told Abraham about that it was going to happen. But he said after those 400 years, he was going to judge those nations that did us wrong and that held us in the captivity. And but we were going to come out with great substance. And then guess what was going to happen? We're going to go into the wilderness get our training for three and a half years, and we're going to come out obeying his voice, keeping this covenant, and we're going to be that peculiar treasure that he's always looked for, and guess what's going to happen? We're going to be above all the people on the earth, because all the earth is Yahuwah and the fullness thereof. Hallelujah. Here's the next set apart scripture. This is Deuteronomy, Davarim 7 and 6. For thou art and set apart people unto Yahuwah, Dael. The Most High Dael has chosen thee. He didn't choose nobody else. He chose us to be a special people unto himself. I think, you know, I don't. I know that Yah said the Gentiles, some of the foreigners are going to be with us. They're going to have to keep the Torah and follow us. But some of them are trying to place themselves in our place. Haven't gone through any slavery. Haven't gone through any hardships. No, you are joining with us. But you are not a Hebrew Israelite. You are a foreigner. If you look at the set apart scriptures, the foreigners were never meant to keep even the Shabbats or do the feast days. That's what the set apart scripture says. So Yah is telling us, look, I have my own special people that I chose. Yeah, come on, join forces with us. Help us out. But you have a place to be in and we got our place to be in as his people. You can't take our place. No, you cannot take our place. You have to be born an Israelite. Then he said the rest of it, above all the people that are upon the face of the earth, he repeated that again. So Yah is in love with his people. Thank him for waking us up. Here is Psalms, Tehillim 100, 1 through 3. Make a joyful noise unto Yahuwah, all ye lands. Serve Yahuwah with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. 
Know ye that Yahuwah, he is Elohim, ain't number one. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. He made us and not we ourselves. We are his people. He's making that specific. He's talking about us. Made us to worship him. Made us to praise him. Made us to keep his Torah. Made us to keep his commandments. That's why our punishment is so severe. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. That's right. The Hebrew Israelites are his people. The Negroes that have been scattered worldwide by way of the transatlantic slave trade. There were some of us that were left over in Africa, but the real name is Al-Kabalon. We were left over there, and they are awaiting our arrival. And guess what? They are waking up too. Still in Africa. Hebrews that are still in Africa, they're waking up to their identity. They're shaking off the shambles. And some of them were already keeping Torah. They were already keeping the Tanakh. They were already doing the feast days. They were already still practicing who they were as a people. We are not lost. We have been scattered. Hallelujah. I thank Yah for this awakening. I thank Yah for the people that are waking up over in al Kabbalah. Wake on up, Hebrews. Let's get together. All right, here's the next set of parts. Scripture, Tehillim, Psalms 135 and 4. For the Most High has chosen Jacob unto himself and Yasharel for his peculiar treasure. Our grandfather, forefather, Jacob is the one that Yah chose but he made his seed, Yasharel, for his peculiar treasure. We are his peculiar treasure. He didn't say nothing about no heathens, no Gentiles, no Africans. Only Yasharel is his peculiar treasure. Now, we got a Salah moment right there. Salah means to pause and calmly think about that. Our identity has been hidden, has been stolen from us, but our identity is being revealed. And guess what? What's done in the dark is being brought to the light. Let's get ready to go to our next set of part scripture. The next one is... Kappa Rashan, 1 Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and set apart nation. That's talking about us. A peculiar people that ye should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. I am so glad that Yah chose us. I've always known that we were special people. I've always known that we were somebody great. Look at us and all these inventions that we have done, all the things that we have created. Every sports we have gotten into, we have taken over. Everything we put our hand to is blessed. Can't nobody cook like us. Can't nobody dance like us. They can't sing like us. They can't do anything like us. Yah has made us stand out even in the land of these captivities. Even when the world is still against us and hating us and killing us, we're still standing out above all other heathens. And they're trying to figure out how these people are still moving, how they're still going forward. And we're doing everything we can to wipe them out. As in Psalms 83 stated that they were going to wipe us out from being a nation. But you can't wipe out the nation that Yahuwah has his hand on. We are Yahuwah's people and the apple of his eye. You better take your hands off. Because Yah is coming back for vengeance against those that came against his people. And that are still coming against his people. Your day of reckoning is about to take place. Saints, you have to realize there's a strong covenant that Yah made with our ancestors and our forefathers. A covenant that can never be broken. Even though Yah dealt with us harshly, even though we have gone into captivity, even though we have been dealt with with all kind of hardships and different things, being broke when other people are getting up above us, people stealing our land, taking our possessions, even though we've gone through all that, yet the covenant still remains in effect. Let me read Jeremiah 32 and 40. Look what it says. I will make an everlasting covenant. I told you, the covenant ain't going nowhere. With them, not no heathens, not no Gentiles, not no other nations. With us, I will never turn away from doing good for them. No matter what we've gone through, it seems like Yah has left us. But too many of us are crying out to Yah, saying, Yah, deliver us, forgive us for the sins of our forefathers, our ancestors, our, our, our relatives. Forgive us for my sins. Forgive us for our children, children's sins. Forgive us. We're crying out to Yah to forgive us. And yes, his punishment has been just and justified against us because of our behaviors. But I want to tell you that Yah said his covenant is everlasting. Let me start that over again. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never turn away from doing good for them. I will put my fear in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. Guess what's happening? Yah is putting his fear in our heart because of this awakening. He's getting us to a place that we don't want to depart. We don't want to leave him. 
We long for him. We can't wait till he arrives to get us away from these heathens, to gather us, to take us home, take us to these three and a half years in the wilderness to get our pure language back, to get our nation's heritage back, to get our culture back, to learn about the feast days and learn about these Shabbats the way we're supposed to be keeping them. And guess what, saints? It's about to happen real soon. Yah is on his way. I love you all. Continue to move forward. Don't forget, you are Yahuwah's people. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.